Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Michael here with Primal Legend Leatherworks. Um, as you can tell, it is a pretty cruddy day today. Uh, no fun to get out of the house. Can't really do much of anything. Um, kids are stuck inside, so I'm entertaining them and cooking and everything else. It's been a while since I shot a video like this, uh, really kind of introducing some new products. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, work around the house as you can tell this is for those of you who've been following me for a while um, this is the room that I really started doing all my work in I had uh, a channel you know a few years ago on this channel I was doing a lot of tech stuff and electronic stuff and then really started sharing more of my love of the outdoors but I still kept shooting in this area and I'm converting this room to a usable bedroom and really just kind of expanding up on the second floor here well, enough about that. That's not why you're watching this video. I've got a couple of knives that I want to show you guys. And uh, one of them is for a client, this one right here. Another one is almost complete, but it's, it's finished enough to show you guys. I have not done sheaths for those knives. I've had a lot of people ask me about my leather work and sheath making and that type of thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm doing a video on the sheath that I'm making. So that should be interesting. Hopefully you guys tune in for when those videos come up, and, and they should be out pretty quickly. To start off with, I want to show you a new knife that I built right here. It's not a brand new design. It's the Wanderer. You guys have seen that before. But uh, there's something a little bit different with, these, not with this particular one that I've done. Basically, what I've got is the Wanderer with a matching fire steel. And the type of wood that I used for the handle on this particular knife, um, it's matching here as well, is teak. And I know it's not a very common wood that you're going to see on a knife. Most people don't say, hey, I have a teak, you know, teak um, handled knife. But there's a story behind this wood. Essentially, I'm not going to give you the full story because I'm actually writing a detailed blog on it. But long story short, Long time ago, there was an interesting story about one of our naval ships and why it was decommissioned. And uh, during that process, many, many, many decades ago, uh, someone came across some of the teak that was actually used on the deck of that boat. Uh, and I'm going to call it a boat because I don't want to narrow it down any further than that. Um, so what he did was he's had it for, again, going on, you know, a few decades. I don't even want to narrow it down to the decade. Um, and knew that I made knives, ran across my channel. Um, he's an old friend of the family. I've known him. Actually, he's known me since I was in diapers. Um, he reached out, said he had some interesting wood. He'd like to see something done with it. He didn't uh, know what he was going to do. He's a woodworker himself, and, and it wasn't enough for him to do an actual project with, but he said I might be able to make something interesting from it. So lo and behold, I made a fire steel and I made a matching knife to go along with it. Um, yellow liners on this one. I'm still pop doing some polishing and some fit and finish to this, but uh, this will be done re really soon. I built this to sell. This is not going to be the knife that I'm going to own, uh, this, but this is not, at the same time, this is not for a client. I just was inspired to build a knife when he gave it to me and thought it would be a really neat build, a really cool knife with a really good story. The Wanderer is the knife that I carry with me um, every time I go out bushcrafting. I love it. It's a small knife. It's not, you know, it's it's one eighth inch steel on the spine. This particular one is one eighth inch. The one I carry is five thirty seconds. You know, it fits in the hand really, really well. It's got a lanyard hole in it. Um, again, this is not a brand new design. So you, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably seen it. Uh, if not, there's a full description on the knife. Uh, in my channel you can check that out and I'll link it down below but I just thought that this the wood that he provided was perfect for this knife you know there's a few styles that I do and I don't know why this one just stuck out to me as you know this is the knife that needs that wood so this will be available for sale if anybody's interested reach out to me you can leave me a comment here uh, if you're following me on Facebook you can certainly leave me a message there Instagram as well um, or you can uh, email me right through my website. There'll be a link in the description below as well as at the end of the video to get a hold of me. So that's this knife. This particular one right here is actually a customer build. Here it is. This one is pretty well finished up. 
It's ready for the sheath. You need to make the sheath. Again, that's one that's going to be a video done on this as well. You'll see the handle's been polished as well, which is something I still have to do with this. It's not finished on here because I had to, to get not rocking on this one. This sports black walnut. I've got some white liners in there, some deer antler, leather spacers, uh, brass, and the finish is a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Um, basically, this finish is is more of a of polishing right after heat treating. Uh, I kind of wanted to leave the rough look and and the 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 the, the, the hand touched look, so to speak, in this in the finish. I polished the edge very well, and the spine is still at an extremely sharp 90 degrees. I don't know if you can see the light coming off of there, um, but that allows for the ferro rod. There's a matching ferro rod. Again, this is made with black walnut, and I put a black liner in the middle here just to kind of divide it to give it a little bit of look. Um, I was going to go with the white, but I just felt um, that would have just been too much, and I liked how subtle the black was. The personalized touch that the client did for this build was he wanted a lanyard tube in it. Now I hadn't done that before. It did require me to shorten the tang a little bit to make room for that, um, which is not something that I ever wanted to do. I wanted the tang to run the full length of the handle or as much of it as I possibly could. So what I ended up doing was uh, the, the tang stops right here at the lanyard tube hole. So it still pretty much covers your whole hand, at least mine and an average size hand here. I'm not. 6'5", but I'm not, you know, 5'6", either. Fits in there perfect. It's very, very nice. I, I, I tried a different method for the finish, and I, I've got to say I am beyond in love with it. Uh, this is going to be a durable finish. It's going to be strong. I'm still working out some details on it and doing a little bit of research uh, on, on this particular finish, but what I've seen so far, this should be a very durable, long-lasting uh, uh, finish. It's polished up, polishes up very well. Anyway, guys, that's the other knife that I've got. Uh, this one, like I said, is already sold. Client's already claimed it. And uh, he's seen the knife, which is the only reason that I'm doing this video. Uh, I've been posting pictures on Instagram, and he's, uh, I, I see that he's seen a few of them and you know, liked the pictures so far. So the next step is to go ahead and make the sheath for it, like I said before. Um, I will be doing that relatively soon, and I will be capturing that on video as well. I just wanted to take a quick second to show you the knives that I've been working on, or the, the two that are closest to finish that I've been working on um, so far. The um, channel's been doing extremely well. I really appreciate everybody's uh, you know comments and likes and shares and all the good stuff everybody's told me. There's a bit of a funny story to my one of my last videos that I'll share with you real quick, only because I've got no problem sharing it and I don't mind being transparent with the stuff. Um, I recently did a video where I carved a spoon for the first time, and I've never carved anything before just besides whittling a point on a stick and some feather sticks, and that's carving, but it's not what I'm talking about when I say decorative carving. And uh, took it out, and it was great. It, 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 I was completely satisfied with the way it turned out. Just the right size, fits right in the cup, everything was perfect. And one of the things that I had heard, and I've seen people do this before, is where they take their carvings and they'll boil it in heavily salted water for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, let it dry, and they sand it out, and boom, you've got a good not, good, um, good item. I started that process the other day, and right after I started it, my neighbor called me. He said, hey, can I borrow you for a quick second? Help me move something. So I ran over there to help him out, and the quick second help me move turned out to be taking the block out of his Volkswagen that he had just loosened up and was sitting there on the frame, putting it on an, an engine stand. It took a little bit longer than I thought, and by the time we were done, I completely forgot about the, the spoon, got to talking, and then it hit me. I had a spoon sitting on the stove boiling. I ran over there. All the water had evaporated. Salt crust was everywhere, and the, and the spoon had charred beyond belief. Uh, the bowl was the only thing that was pretty much left. I picked it up. It was still one solid piece. And the second I touched the handle, boom, it snapped. Um, I got so frustrated I threw it away and I kind of wish I'd have saved it because I would like to show you some pictures of what it looked like. I was pretty disappointed and I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm going to be doing some more carving soon. I got a lot of good feedback on the carving video. I will not be wasting your time with another spoon simply because I've already done that for you guys and, and I just don't want to keep shooting the same type of video over and over again. But anyway, I thought that was kind of a funny story. Guys, I really appreciate, like I said before, all your views, your likes, your comments. Please, uh, Share the videos. That always helps me out. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. 
At the end of the video will be all the links to get a hold of me. Follow me on Instagram, like me on Facebook if you want to see more regular pictures. I tend to post more there than I do on YouTube simply because I like to make sure that I've got good content on my YouTube channel. But then again, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those types of things, it's an instant feedback. I'll shoot a picture of what I'm working on, post it up, and you can check it out. Also check out the website, a lot of great stuff out there. There'll be a link to the adventure blog that I have on there, which is going to have the full story on the teak for these knives, or rather for this knife and uh, fire steel that I made. There's also another build that I'm doing um, that's going to be really kind of a one-of-a-kind one uh, setup that I'm going to be doing. So definitely keep a lookout for that. It's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Got two ideas for some handles that I'm going to, that I'm going to use. And uh, I'd love to get you guys input on that. So anyway, enough rambling from me, guys. Get out there, have some fun, and uh, I'll see you in the woods.